It might be difficult to believe, but there are e-commerce businesses out there that are currently generating over 50% of their total sales every single month only from Google and Bing ads. In today's video, I'm going to do a full breakdown of how I'm currently helping an e-commerce business do just that. So with that said, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to go over is live results. So here we are inside of the live Shopify dashboard. I'll quickly refresh just to confirm it's actually live. So as you can see, last month, this business generated over $458,000 in sales. Now, the reason why this business stands out compared to others is because half, actually a little bit more than half, 58% to be exact, of their total sales came from Google and Bing ads only. Now, most e-commerce businesses are only generating anywhere from 15, maybe 20% of their total sales from Google ads, and majority of businesses are not running Bing ads. And so I want to break down how we're actually getting these kind of results. So here's a look at the Google ads. So last month, you can see that we spent $58,000. We generated $240,000 and we netted a 4X return on ad spend. Now looking at Bing, you can see that last month we spent $6,800. We generated $31,000 and we netted a 4.5X return on ad spend. Now that we went over live results, let's get into more specifics. So here's a full breakdown going over how I helped this business go from zero to over $270,000 per month with Google and Bing ads. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna mainly focus on the overall strategy. I'm not gonna spend too much time going over like the actual setup and the technical settings of like setting up your Google ads account, setting up your campaigns, et cetera. And the reason why is because I believe that the most valuable part to actually getting results with Google ads is the actual strategy that you have in place. And so, there's plenty of other um, resources that you guys can use to actually learn how to actually set up a Google Ads account and a Google Merchant Center and all this. And so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but before getting started with Google Ads, it's important to invest time into the research and development phase. With all of the businesses that I work with, I take time to do market research, understand the ideal customer profile, brainstorm on ad angles and creatives, and then obviously strategize on campaign development. And I'll go through more specifics on each one. So starting off with market research, typically for all the businesses that I work with, I have them first complete a market research doc that helps me get as much context as possible on the business. I believe in order to really deliver the best possible results, you need to have a full understanding of the business inside and out. Next is I like to take time to then identify the top competitors across Google Shopping and Google Search. From there, I like to also outline the pricing that they have, their offers, and how they're differentiating their products compared to the other competitors. From there, what I like to do next is take time to ideate on different keywords that are best fit for the product that they're offering and the current market based on the research that was done. Next, moving on to ICP development. So understanding the ideal customer profile is very important. So one of the first things that I have all businesses do is complete this avatar profile doc. And then from here, I use the insights from here to begin outlining different rough drafts and ideas for the Google shopping listings and add copy for the Google search ads. Then the next thing that we do is leverage the data from the market research that we did and the ideal customer profile to develop unique and competitive positioning for both the Google Shopping ads and the Google search ads. And then last but not least here, we begin listing out all the optimizations that we're going to do for Google Shopping and for Google search. Now, moving on to ad angles and creatives. So one of the first things that we start off with is just a complete brain dump for all the optimizations that we think would be needed for the Google Shopping ads and for the Google search ads. From here, we proceed to refine the overall optimizations that we're going to do for the product titles, for the images, and then for Google search, for the headlines we're going to use and the descriptions and the extensions and more. From there, then we actually take the time to write out these new product titles and prepare new images for the Google shopping listings and also create um, new ad copy for Google search. And then from there, what we do is we then start to test multiple of these different variations, right? Whether it's different product titles for Google shopping or different images. And then for Google search, we're trying out different headlines, different descriptions, et cetera. Now, this is the overall optimization framework that we use for both Google Shopping and for Google Search. So ideally, we break things down into these different testing variables. So the main variables that you have for Google Shopping is your product titles, your product images, and your price, right? And those 
are all the different variables that you have that you can test within. Now for Google search, you have your headlines, your descriptions, and your calls to actions. And those are all the variables that you can test within. So these are all the different variables that you can test within Google shopping. You have your product titles, your product images, and the price. And so ideally, what we like to do is we like to test at least two of these variables uh, and see what kind of performance we get. And then once we figure out, you know, what performs, whether it's this title or this title structure or this image or this image here, then we'll take the top performing combinations and we'll double down on those and rolling those out across all the products. Next, for Google search, the main split tests that you can run are going to be within the headlines and then the descriptions and then the calls to actions. And then from here, what we do is same thing. We figure, we test out to see, okay, what combination of headlines and descriptions and call to actions perform best. And then we continue to double down on the top performing variables across all the different campaigns and keywords, et cetera, right? And so ideally what we do is once we put all these together, right, all these different tests, then we get into actually the next phase, which is the launch phase. So in this phase, obviously, you know, one of the things that we focus on is preparing all the campaigns, reviewing them, and then making sure that they're all good to go. And then we actually launch the campaigns. From there, then um, one of the things that we do is we let it run until it has 1,000 impressions per ad group. And then after we have those 1,000 impressions on each ad group, then we start optimizing. Now, next, I want to go over the optimization cadence. So ideally, when you're first getting started, you're not going to have all of the main metrics and KPIs you're looking for. And so ideally, what you need to do is you need to measure performance backwards from the end goal. So obviously, if you have already return on ad spend, you can look at how that's performing, right? But you most likely won't because you're still going to be in the early phases when you first launch a campaign. The next thing you want to look at is, okay, what's my customer acquisition cost? If you've already had some purchases that have came through. And then from here, what you want to do is you want to focus on making minor optimizations twice a week, right? That's the kind of cadence that I have found to work best. And then major optimizations twice a month. A common mistake that I see done a lot of times is, you know, people get impatient with their Google ads and they'll start making optimizations more frequently without actually letting things run long enough to actually measure the true performance, right? Now, moving on to identifying winners and losers. So ideally, what you wanna look for is you wanna measure the different variables that are contributing either to success or failure. You wanna look at, okay, well, what are the keywords and search terms that are getting all the spend? What's the current bid strategy? What's the product feed and ad copy look like? All of these are the different variables that you have that are contributing to either winning performance or losing performance. And then from here, what you want to do is you want to optimize around sales first. And then if you don't have sales then you move down to cost per click and click to rate, right? The next thing I want to go over is the creative testing base. So ideally you should be testing a minimum of one new shopping or search variable per month, in my opinion. And you should be using Airtable, Google Sheets or Trello to manage your creative testing. For us, we use something similar that looks like this, where we keep an outline of all the different variables that we gathered from doing the initial research, right? And we put them all in different buckets. We put them in the ready to test bucket, in the progress bucket, in the winning bucket, and in the losing bucket. And then from here, we kind of keep these all here. And then we dynamically, you know, move these around depending on, you know, where they are, right? Whether we're currently testing them, right? They're in progress. Or if there's a winning variable, we'll have it here, et cetera, et cetera. Now, moving on from here, in regards to the scaling process, and we'll create a complete separate campaign, continue all the tests in the original campaign while also scaling what's performing in the new campaign. And this is the ad optimization flywheel that we basically use and what it looks like, right? So first thing is first. We launch a test, we measure the performance, we measure metrics in this order. So we look at sales and ROAS first, if we have those metrics. If we don't, then we'll look at the CPA, but I guess these are all tied, right? We'll look at sales and ROAS, we'll look at the CPA, we'll look at the conversion rate, we'll look at the click-through rate, we'll look at the cost per click. And then from here, we either cut losers and we then scale winners. We collect this data, we figure out, okay, what's working? We make note of this. And then from this, this is an important piece. From what's working, then we double down and we create new tests based on what worked with new title variations for shopping, new descriptions, new images for shopping, et cetera. For search, we'll create new headlines, new ad copy, new keywords, et cetera, et cetera. And so ideally, this is the overall process that I use to help this business go from zero to over $270,000 per month with Google and Bing ads. And just so you guys can see that I'm not just kind of saying this to say it. Here, if we look inside of the Google Ads account, these are all the campaigns that I created. You can see that there are a total of 33 campaigns that are currently live and active, right? And this is a combination of standard shopping campaigns, search campaigns, 
Pmax campaigns, and that's all of them actually. We're only running um, standard shopping, Pmax, and search for this account. And so um, same thing for Bing, right? Bing, same exact thing that I'm doing. So yeah, I mean, overall, I know that this is a lot that I kind of covered in this video, but I wanted to try to provide as much context as possible to really help you guys maximize the performance you're getting from Google ads. Because in my experience, most people that are running Google ads, they're not taking an approach like this. They're not implementing like an actual strategy. They're not taking the time to go through this research and development phase and then strategizing from here on, you know, how they should actually approach the actual ads they're running. They're just um, really kind of just diving in and like really guessing. And so my goal is to help you guys eliminate as much of the guesswork as possible and ideally, you know, cut right to the chase. And so if you're running an e-commerce business and you're looking to get help with either your Google or Bing ads, down below this video, in the description, there's a link where you can actually book in a call with me and my team. And on that call, we can review your business, um, get to know more about what you're doing. And then from there, we can actually strategize and put together an action plan to help you with your Google and Bing ads. So yeah, I mean, for this video, that's pretty much everything. If you guys enjoyed, as always, I would appreciate if you dropped a like on the video. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, but with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.